And as long as you must replace Lionel Simmons and his more than 3,000 career points, it's nice to have a backcourt recognized as one of the best in the nation. A homegrown guard tandem led by Doug Overton, who has emerged as one of the top senior point guard prospects. You know, we have, I think, the best backcourt in the country with, uh, you know, Jack, Randy, and myself. You know, a lot of people don't know about it, but as long as we know that, you know, we're going to have that confidence to go into the game. I think that, uh, you know, if our outside play is there and our big men deal early, in the early part of the season, we'll be all right. Randy is Randy Woods, a defensive demon with lightning quickness. Jack is Jack Hurd, the perfect offensive complement. The front court, though, is still a question mark. Broad-shouldered Ron Holland and junior Milko Levers, who is recovering from minor knee surgery, should get the majority of the minutes. No, it will not be another 30-win season, but LaSalle has the talent to mount a strong defense of last year's City Series championship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a play! Woodard counts the basket and he's fouled by Ellis. They are young, deep, and strong. Three consecutive solid recruiting classes have retooled Roly Massimino's Wildcats and placed them in position to again challenge for national prominence. With so much available talent, our doubleheader, the Quakers and the Explorers. Hi, everybody. I'm Larry Rose. As the band kicks in, live with Eddie Stefanski for the Quakers and the Explorers. Eddie, a couple of notable absences this year, this game. Randy Woods and Hassan Duncan. Well, Randy Woods, it really hurts the point guard out for a few games with LaSalle. Hurts him in the quickness. The inside guy, Hassan Duncan. Randy Dumpy doesn't have to go to him inside. That's a big loss for Penn. It's going to hurt, but they played very well against SMU. They'll be patient on offense. For LaSalle, they do have Doug Overton, rated as the number one senior point guard by a lot of services. Came out with a career high in his opening night. Oh, he was terrific against Lyola of Baltimore. Scored 31 points, can do it all. He has the quickness, the ball handling. As you said, he may be a first-round draft choice. He can also shoot the basketball, a complete basketball player. Now, Pennsylvania has very little size. They really don't have a lot of innate athletic ability. A guy like Paul McMahon may be the quintessential uh, Quaker, 6'4", nasty, tries to get the job done. Well, Paul McMahon said to me last year, give me some credit. And I'll tell you, the kid deserves the credit because he plays extremely hard. He'll hit the open jump shot, really doesn't turn over the ball. If he plays within the flow of the offense, he'll be an effective player for the Quakers this afternoon. Randy Dunphy had been an assistant under Speedy Mara, so it's the student against the teacher. We're set, coming back with starting lineups for the Quakers and the Explorers in a moment. Big Five City Series Basketball on Prism is brought to you by RCA Color Track 2000, Home Theater TV. RCA, changing entertainment again. Ring in the new year with the best movies and home team sports. Ring in the new year with Prism. Only Prism has Shirley MacLaine and Julia Roberts in Steel Magnolias. Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell. The story camp. The second game of today's doubleheader is a Philadelphia Big Five City Series game featuring the LaSalle University Explorers. And the University of Pennsylvania Quakers. Starting lineup first for LaSalle University at a forward position, a senior six feet six inches tall from Fort Worth, Texas, number 20, Broderick President. At the other forward, a junior six feet six inches tall from Linnitz, Pennsylvania, number 25, Jack Hurd. At the center spot, a junior, six feet, nine inches tall, from Amsterdam and Netherlands, number 44, Milko Levers. At the guards, a senior, six feet, three inches tall, from Philadelphia, number 11, Doug Overton. Now the other guard, a sophomore, six feet, four inches tall, from Slidell, Louisiana, number 24, Jeff Neubauer. The head coach at LaSalle University Explorers in his fifth season is Bill Speedy Morris. The assistant coaches Joe Mahalik, Randy Monroe, Sam Ryan Sr., and Rich Prendergast. And for the University of Pennsylvania Quakers. At a forward position, 
the senior, six feet, four inches tall, from West Haven, Connecticut, number 34, Paul McMahon. At the other forward, the senior, six feet, seven inches tall, from Virginia Beach, Virginia, number 52, Ray Marshall. At the center spot, a senior, six feet, seven inches tall, from Villanova, Pennsylvania, number double zero, Vince Curran. At the guard, the junior, six feet, one inch, from Billsburg, Pennsylvania, number three, Ken Graff. And at the other guard, the junior, five feet, ten inches tall, from Newtown Square, Pennsylvania, number 14, Paul Chambers. The head coach of the Clippers in his second season is Brian Rugby, the assistant coaches, Brandy O'Hanlon, Bill Jackson, C.W. The official... Well, that's Stefanski, the Quakers, and the Explorers. There's the student, friend Dunphy. And, of course, the, the teacher had been Speedy Morris. Execution discipline to keep for that man's team. Exactly. Franny Dunphy has a lot of respect for Speedy Morris and the LaSalle Explorers. He expects a lot of pressure against the Explorers. Uh, excuse me, the Quakers. The Quakers have gotten it against Kentucky already, where they lost. They played SMU at the year of the flush with a very good win, and they were pressured in both contests. So he sees the Explorers coming out and trying to steal the basketball. A lot of storylines in this one. Roderick Precedent, a uh, transfer from Harden Simmons, number 20 for the South, making his uh, first uh, appearance in a Big Five game. There you see the starting lineups. Jack Hurd thrust into a more prominent role again this year with Lionel Simmons' departure, Andy Woods' absence. Ilko Levers will jump it up against Ray Marshall. We've got an illegal advantage called, and we'll do it again. And it's controlled by Vince Curran. Vince Curran, the banger from St. Joe's Prep. Paul Chambers, number 14, out of the Piscopal Academy. 3-2 set up by LaSalle. Ken Graff. Young man with the ball is the shooter in the Penn Quakers offense. He's a standstill shooter, but he can get it going. Nice no look for Marshall, but he walked. That's the problem a lot of time. They'll get the ball inside to Ray Marshall, Vince Curran. they got to score some baskets for the defense to respect them. And here's some pressure. Overton with Chambers. And Dougie needs uh, all 10 of it to get across. Turnover. A tough matchup right there as Paul Chambers has to play the All-American candidate, Doug Overton. Right there, he got away with a lot of body. The referee was very lenient there. A first turnover for LaSalle. In the corner, McMahon. Chambers, they work the top draft. As Marshall, 12 feet away. Air ball into the hands of President. Here comes LaSalle. They love the open floor. Jack Hurd for three. Way off target. Floor rebound precedent, and it's pulled by Hurd. Looks for Levers, gets it back with the left hand. Well, Jack Hurd, very lucky there. He lost the handle of the basketball, went through two Penn defenders, and got that left handed layup. Chambers looks over for instructions, sees the zone. That's Newbauer, number 24, starting in place of Randy Wood. Graff gives up the dribble. Graff to Chambers, to the foul line. Tough pass, McMahon pulls it down, falling, firing, misses. Levers, the two-hand rebound. Milko Levers had a big game against Viola. 12 rebounds there with authority, brings the basketball down. And Ray Marshall, the swipe from behind. Second team foul. Pennsylvania's going to be hard pressed to find inside points. That's the problem. All year long, they're going to have to go to someone with Hassan Duncan not going to be able to play this year. Doug Overton off the dribble. Chambers right on him. So what? Two-pointer Overton. That's a real nice shot by Doug Overton. Off the dribble. Makes the hard power dribble away from the defender and knocks down two. We played two minutes. Pennsylvania yet to score. One thing, LaSalle's in the zone, but they're very active in the zone. They're just not letting Penn pass the basketball around the perimeter. They set up the three-way passing play. They come across the top for grab. Chambers, McMahon, two-point shot is good. Paul McMahon. Good ball movement right there with Graff and Chambers at the guard, and Chambers swings the ball to Paul McMahon. They finally get on the board for two LaSalle. 
high screen by Liebers. They leave it for him. Broderick president, right foot on the line, so that's a two-point attempt. And easy rebound, Vince Curran to grab. Chambers spots up, thinks about it, has McMahon. Grab on the baseline, collects himself and can't get it to fall. Floorboard belongs to Levers. Overton has heard, that's his spot. That's a, and that's what LaSalle loves to do, Larry, is run it up. Jackie Hurd will shoot quickly. He has five points early in the game. He can find that three-point line with his eyes closed, sound asleep, whatever. He knows right where he is. I think he's never seen a shot he didn't like. <laughs> McMahon baseline. Tick Rob. Rainbow shots off the heel of the rim. Retrieved by the guard, Nybauer, Neubauer rather, to Overton. Head up all the way. Leaves for Jeff. Push shot. Whoa! That's what Jeff Neubauer, the sophomore from Louisiana, has been struggling shooting the basketball. Speedy Moore said before the game, if he could just knock down his first, maybe he'll be a better shooter. He's been very effective in practice. Kind of an unusual looking shot. Almost a push shot off the shoulder. Big man. Chambers, head fake, bodies flying. That's Vince Curran. Dual possession? No. Foul called Chambers. Climb in the back. So LaSalle is only early going. Penn does not look real good early in the game. I think they're just too with them playing with a lot of emotion right now. Not under control. They're real pumped up here. They got to take care of the basketball. And Granny's playing man to man, going right at him. Overton, head and shoulder fake, Chambers who rides the body, and Paul can't believe that one. Tough little kid, 5'9", out of Episcopal Academy, has two fouls in four minutes. And we'll take our first time out of the contest. LaSalle has built the early lead. It's 10-2, just over four minutes gone at the Palestra. In the basketball, confidence is a great thing to have. Penn's only one out of five for the field. LaSalle, four of six. McMahon, nice play, the step in front. Here's Chambers. Stops and pops. And Paul Chambers has his first bucket. Randy Dumpy, I'm sure, is very happy after the timeout. He gets the quick steal, and Chambers gets him back within six. Heard moving well off the ball, gets himself a nine-footer. He's not going to pass that one up too often. Heard's got seven to lead everybody early. Wouldn't be surprised if Franny Dumpy, the coach of Pennsylvania, goes into some kind of junk defense. Maybe a triangle and two with putting man-to-man -man defense on Overton and Hurt, because Hurt can really hurt you out there. A good aggressive slide to the defense by LaSalle, so Graff has to penetrate and can't get the roll. President fouled by Paul McMahon. And the team fouls are mad. This looked like McMahon might have been clean, but they'll call the foul. Roderick President, there's a little push by him. There he gets away with it. There's your foul. The transfer for Harden Simmons. Overton now with Graf on them as they have to switch. Chambers, smallest man on the floor, has a big boy rebound. Here he comes head high in the open floor. Sal zoning up? No, they don't really think there's an inside game from the Quakers, so they can zone it up and take away the perimeter jumpers from Chambers, Graf, and McMahon. So they're going to see if Penn can get anything inside. If not, they'll stay in the zone and bring it out. You see where Neubauer is. He's way above the three-point range. So it's an extended 3-2, not packing it in at all. And the Quakers yet to have a really uncontested jump shot. Chambers, the penetration. Jack Hurd, good body work, tips it to Overton. 15 feet, Dougie, off the front of the rim. Chambers about 10 inches shorter than Broderick Preston on the baseline. Skip pass, back to McMahon, two-pointer, no. 
Look, Oliver's throwing his weight around. LaSalle's doing an excellent job blocking out. Penn takes one shot, and they're done. I don't even believe they have an offensive rebound this afternoon. Excellent job by all five LaSalle explorers. Look, with three early boards on the defensive end. Dougie walks. And here comes Chambers. And they're really not even working for inside position, even for the kickback. If they should get it to Marshall and Curran, it's almost all perimeter work. They got to show the ball inside just a little bit, get it in and then dump it back out. Let's see if LaSalle goes for it if it goes inside. Big man has a baseline step, but good double teamwork by Hurd, and it goes off the hands of McMahon. Nice job cutting the baseline for uh, Jack Hurd. The slides are very good defensively for LaSalle, taking away passing angles and double teaming the penetrator. Both teams have turned it over three times in the first seven minutes. Ron Holland checked it. There he is over Marshall on the floor, and a foul will be called on Donnie Shelton climbing the back. So a new front court of Shelton and Holland. There's a nice lob pass. Brian Holland, good position. He goes back, really doesn't get fouled. He bangs his head hard. There's Shelton over the top. Donnie Shelton has to be aggressive. He's a key for LaSalle this year. If Donnie Shelton comes to play, they can be a pretty good team. If he doesn't play, they're going to have problems inside. Bra for three, short. Overton wants to run. Has lots of company. Jack Hurd with nine points now. That's a great pass by Doug Overton. Jackie Hurd wanted it early, but Overton took both defenders with him. Saw Hurd and gave him the easy two. McMahon again spins baseline. Now he looks to Curran, who runs over Hurd. Speedy wanted the offensive foul, but uh, no blood, no foul in Big Five. And I'll tell you, Vince Curran is a load. Yeah, 245. <laughs> he's a big boy. He'll play every minute he's out in that floor. He plays hard. Gets another rebounder. He's got three early. That's the cross-court pass against the zone. McMahon, Chambers. Baseline is Marshall. Chambers from way out off the glass, not his shot. No way. You cannot shoot that. Paul Chambers is a better player than that. He's got to recognize that's not a good shot for him. Overton from there. He can shoot that one. <laughs> well, Doug Overton showing the scouts if there's anybody here from the NBA that he's got the range also. He may be a point guard, but that's real nice. It's an 11 point LaSalle lead. Pennsylvania six points in eight and a half minutes. Graff alone. Way off target. Chambers again has it. Thought about it, then put it up in the air. Yeah, Paul Chambers lucky on that one, really adjusted his shot, but he had his hands under control and it knocks down two. But this is a pace of a sal once. I don't think the Quakers can win with this kind of pace up and down. They got to control the basketball, use that 45 second clock. Holland classic drop step. No. And Vince Kern will take it away from teammates, from his family. He puts rebounds. That's his fourth. So look where this LaSalle zone is. The middle is wide open, but they, they're going to let Penn have the ball inside. Graf forces it to Marshall. Rejected Shelton foul, Lonnie Shelton, or Donnie Shelton. Well, Donnie Shelton picks up quick two fouls here in the first half, but again, he's showing some aggressiveness. Ken Graf makes it happen. The good penetration left hand. Three LaSalle players. He finds Marshall. Now Marshall's got to take it strong and score this basket. And there's the foul and the block. Wholesale substitutions. Dan Purdy comes in for Pennsylvania. Along with Will McAllister. And Mike Malofsky. Malofsky. I'm sorry. Purdy and the other night looked pretty good, Larry. Yeah. Played well. Transfer from Tufts. He's going to help a little bit. And the other two gentlemen are freshmen. <laughs> breaking the action to get set. Remind everybody if it should go in, it will be breaking. It does, and we will. So Pennsylvania reaches double figures after nine minutes and 15 seconds. And we'll look back at our Big Five flashback now. Look back at a game played just about five years ago.
between the Pennsylvania Quakers and the LaSalle Explorers. Uh, we think you'll remember this one. Tom Schneider's proud bunch of Quakers took the floor this December night, owning the longest losing streak in City Series history, 11 straight games. Pennsylvania played an inspired first half, building an 18-point lead to Pitt. See you later. The Quakers would have to withstand a furious LaSalle rush, but in the end, it would become the only City Series win for the class of 87. Hi, I'm John Griffin, new head coach of the St. Joe Hawks. And I'm Rolly Massimino, the old head coach of the Villanova Wildcats. John, since you're new in town... That's got a light speed, his eyes up. That's Purdy. McMahon, baseline. A lot of traffic. Purdy dips, hangs, throws it up a little bit wild. Nice tap once, Marshall, no. Into the hands of Shelton. Out of the run comes Overton. NBA range again. Wow. I mean, there's no way. You, you have to respect Doug Overton's quickness. Will McAllister, a freshman, <laughs> is down in his stance. He's saying no man's going to shoot from this distance. And he fires it home. That's eight for him, for Doug Overton. And McAllister and Purdy on the outside. That's Dan Purdy. His dad played here. The captain of the 62 Quakers. He was your teammate, right? Ooh, Close. Cold. McAllister and Marshall as they simply work their perimeter weave. Shot clock's at 10. Purdy will spot up. Dan Purdy showed very good form there. Overton the quick shot the other way and McAllister runs it down. McMahon has a Marshall screen and a double dribble. Turnover number four on the Quaker. Talked about Paul McMahon staying in the flow. He tried a little bit too much there. So he made the penetration and the turnover. Now the freshman checks in. Barry Pierce, 6'3", freshman guard out of the Hill School. And it's McAllister trying to chase Overton. Shelton won't hurt you, hurt you too much out there. Stock, little weave with Overton. Posted, Bron Holland. No roll. Good offensive board, though, Shelton. In the corner, Stock, Shelton. And Neubauer for cutting Overton. No, can't see him. He's got to pop back out to get it. Wild shot by Dougie. And there are four bodies on the floor, as you might expect. Dual possession. And the arrow favors the Quakers. Very good possession for the Pennsylvania Quakers, though. Defensively, did a real good job for that man, Fran Dumpy. They just couldn't come up with a rebound. But when you have two freshmen on the floor, Bernie McAllister, Fran Dumpy has to have a smile on his face. Ray Marshall sits down for the moment. Milko Levers back in for LaSalle. Replaces Shelton. Overton for three. No heard offensive board. Pushing foul called. I believe that'll be on Bilofsky or Karino Bilofsky. Right there, the Quakers switched up and went into a zone defense. They still have to be aware of where Overton and Hurd are for the jumpers. So Pennsylvania's got to find some offense. They've scored 13 points in 12 minutes. They trail by nine. Philadelphia's most historic arena comes alive in December with Pennsylvania basketball, Palestra style. There's Big Five City Series action with the LaSalle Explorers Saturday, December 1st, and the Villanova Wildcats December 3rd. Then on Friday, December 7th, the Quakers face the Midshipmen of Navy. It's the games you want to see at the place you want to see them, and good seats are still available. To charge your tickets, call 215-898-6151. Call now. Recently, 25,000 car owners all over America put their cars to an important test. For 365 days and nights, they looked at product quality and dealer service. Then, after a year of ownership, they were surveyed. Somebody extends it and tries to trap out of it off the timeout. 
It's a 2-3 with a pair of freshmen up front. Well, you got to know where Hurd is. That's where he is. Ooh, halfway down and back out. Wolofsky, tough pull, has Purdy. And LaSalle still sitting back 2-3 three or 3-2. Three, Matching off it. There you go, Barry Pierce. Barry, the board. Yeah, nice move for the freshman. First big five game, he takes it right to the LaSalle Explorers. Good power, dribble gets two. Jack Hurd looks for Overton. Somebody's got to come get him. It's Dougie. Milko. Why not? That's why. Sky for the rebound is Barry Pierce. We saw Pierce throw down a couple of hellacious dunks in practice a couple of weeks ago. Malopsky in the rainbow. That also gets the Penn State fans into it. They have three freshmen on the floor and a transfer Malopsky, and he knocks it down, and they get within five. Doug Overton silence, and they all sit down at once across from us. See Dougie that? three for three on threes. They set the big screen for Doug Overton. Will McGowan, freshman, has to get over it or get some help. Whoever screen there has to jump out and help when Doug Overton's coming over. The South shows a little bit of trap with all these young players. You'd think that they uh, that Speedy might come out and trap even more aggressively. There are three freshmen all on the perimeter right now, including that man Purdy, who gets to the lane. Air balls it short. Reach in foul, Will McAllister. Again, Penn has to be very patient on offense and right there Dan Purdy as we mentioned a freshman from California over penetrated against the Sal's defense in the strip that is a 16 fouls on Pennsylvania the first on McAllister just two committed by LaSalle over there with Purdy Ray Schultz has checked in for LaSalle fighting for the loose ball it winds up in the hands of Jack Hurd. <laughs> Never saw a shot he didn't like. Wow. Quickly. But I'll tell you, the pen's hanging in there down eight. They just need to be a little bit patient here offensively, try to get a good shot. And they're right in the ball game against the Explorers. Paul Chambers has checked back in, replacing Will McAllister. There he is with two fouls. Has a 10-footer. Velofsky climbs the back and keeps it loose for Curran. Chambers a three. And Speedy is in sense because he has should be because they went right over the top they got the ball back they knocked down the three now they're only down five that's Ray Schultz and he is creamed by Vince Curran way after he took the shot and Vince Curran knows why is he fouling Ray Schultz 17 feet in the basket I don't know why Ray's trying to shoot at 17 feet in the basket Ray Schultz, a uh, well-traveled young man at this point, graduate of Archbishop Wood, grew up in Trevers, but went to Florida International in Boca Raton. Not a bad place to hang for a couple of years. Come back, get back into the Big Five, you know. I'd rather be in Boca Raton in the wintertime than in, uh, on Island Avenue. <laughs> First foul shot for the South is half, and it's way off target. Let's see if Ray Schultz can knock this down. Speedy Morris comes into some, some kind of full court pressure. Try to rattle the Quakers. Around and out. So they're 0 for 2. And here comes uh, the trap. 1-2-1-1 one, one, one trap. If we can be a little technical. For a long jumper. That'll be three free throws coming up for Barry Pierce. As he's fouled by Broderick President way out. On the far side, three shots. The new rule in college basketball, if the jump shooter, the offensive player, is taking a three-point opportunity and gets fouled, he will get three chances at the foul line. Watch. He's outside the line, three-point. There's there's not much of a foul, but the referee called it. He'll go to the line for three. We've seen two problems there with Vince Perrin fouling a jump shooter, and that time Broderick President for the foul. 
Uh, this would be, you know, when you have three free throws there, you got to get two of the three. Let's see what he's done. He's missed one so far. You know, Franny, in his own mind, as we check him out, believes that freshmen really shouldn't play. And if it was up to him, the rule would be no freshman eligibility. But he's got such freshman talent, he likes to reward people based on seniority and loyalty. He's going to have a tough choice because he's got some good young athletes. Yeah, their athletes is right. As Barry Pierce checks out, Paul McMahon in. The freshman gave him a good little line there with McAllister and Pierce, and Dan Purdy's still in the lineup. He's dogging Doug Overton all over the court. So this is good time for those the three freshmen. Got him back in the ball game, down by just three. Scott Sheaway has checked in as well, number 40, the former tight end on the football team. Back up power forward, Overton with Purdy. New Bauer to a cutting herd, up and down. And he catches, he spots, and he shoots. And he's leading all scorers right now with the 11, tied with Overton. Jack Hurd had a tough year last year. He's coming out real strong early in this season. He's got to get the basketball a little bit more in order to be effective. McMahon, tough pass for Curran to handle, and a travel is called. The travel may have been before the pass. I don't know. Curran looked like his arm was hammered severely. But a turnover against Pennsylvania. They've committed five, just two for the South. Inside four minutes remaining first half. Over to double team, so Neubauer's alone. That's good execution offensively. Neubauer set the screen. Both Penn Quakers went with Overton because you almost have to. He gets his second three of the game, six points for Neubauer. Shaway comes back out to help against the pressure. Chambers will reset the half court offense. Chambers, Purdy. Shaway, Curran, and Paul McMahon left side. That's Penn squad right now. Down by eight. No look past Chambers, McMahon. Purdy thinks about it. Chambers, the extra dribble, short. And he'll foul Overton, and that'll be three personal fouls, and not a very smart foul for the heady point guard out of Episcopal. Paul Chambers frustrated when he missed the jump shot, tried to go back and get the ball. He fouled Overton. Every time you wrap your arms around someone, the official's going to call it. Pennsylvania is over the limit. LaSalle with just three team fouls, so Doug Overton. With 11 points already, a chance to add it. Now here's where definitely Speedy Marsh should show full court pressure with Chambers on the bench with three fouls. You got Dan Purdy, you got Will McAllister, both freshmen. Look for a lot of pressure all over the court to see if the freshman will throw the ball away. The experience up front in Shaway McMahon and Curran. Over to makes a couple. And we will take a break. The lead is at double digits as Overton now with 13 points. Franny will get his squad together. They trail by 10. Kings will join Mark Zumoff in what should still be a quiet spectrum for a Sixers Celtics highlight. The uh, preview of the coup de grace on our triple header to nine plus scores. Highlights of four. Play on the way. Trouble for Sheaway. The diagonal passed long to McMahon. He wants to go one on five. And the rebound belongs to Broderick Precedent. He's triple teamed and just throws it blindly over his shoulder. Oh, oh tough collision. Jeff Neubauer's down. But Overton's got the ball, wants to alley it to Hurd. And it belongs to Pennsylvania. Jeff Neubauer just gave his body up on that one. They got the ball back, but that was a real bad decision by Doug Overton. A sloppy pass there and it's back to the Quakers. And Dougie pointing at his own head making that uh, clenched fist, tight lip, knows that was a bad pass. Oh, he's too good of a player to make a turnover like that. His Broderick president triple team just threw it away. <laughs> he just fired it up. Yeah, today. he just threw it back. in trouble. Should have probably tried to knock it off one of the players covered him and go out of bounds to get the ball back. Jesus is saying we're sitting here. Yeah. In the lane, Shayway. High low look for Curran. And that's the first time, Larry, we've seen that. Get the ball in the middle, try to dump it low. you got to show something inside this LaSalle zone. Overton almost loses it. Broderick President bails him out, 20 feet out. Heard with McMahon. President to the lane. 
No help for Shayway coming, so Scott's got to commit the hack in the paint. Broderick President doesn't show a lot of offense, but right here, Shayway is knocked down in stance. You see him reaching. You got to move your feet out there, young players, defensively. You can't reach like that. Scott Shayway was not prepared to play defense there, and President went by him. Broderick President. Pretty impressive name there, yeah. Roderick President. When they signed him, it sounded great. Harden Simmons, his old school, went from Division I back to Division Three. so with just one year of eligibility left, not wanting to be de-emphasized, he joined Speedy Morris. Speedy's happy to have him. Ten-point lead. On the sideline is Will McAllister. And Broderick President might have got away with one there because he really didn't take the, the sideline away. Maybe a little of a hip there, but he got away with it. By post levers. Will screen for Hurd. Precedent. 17 footer short. Good leaping ability, Barry Pierce, and here he comes. Dan Purdy. Ran the club very well in practice. Current high, low look from Olofsky. Now Speedy Morris is going to be upset because you get, get it once, but you're not going to come right back and get it again. And he's going to tell him at halftime the back line what's going on here with that play. Moving screen called Jack Hurd as he clears out with the left arm. It's real important here with a minute 12 to go, the Quakers down eight that they don't get impatient, to try to get a good shot, to go in that locker room, make sure they're not double figures or worse against LaSalle. This is a big minute 12 for the young Quakers. And LaSalle's got a couple of fouls to play with should they elect to. They're sitting in the 2-3 right now. Lobs to high, to the corner. McAllister jumps in, creates the contact. And they're going to call it on Broderick precedent. That'll be a two-shot foul as Ray Marshall comes back in. And here's Will McAllister. Jack Hurd, a very short time on the bench. Mike Stock will leave. Hurd will return. Are we done substituting yet? Bron Holland wants to be on the floor, and they'll they won't let him come on. Here's McAllister out of Highland, New Jersey. South Jersey Group Three Championship, 24 plus points per ball game. And Bron Holland is now allowed to come in. Broderick Preston with two fouls will go out. Will McAllister, the young man shooting the foul shots has high jump, 6'8". Wonderful athlete. Randy happy to have him. Seven point ball game. 10 seconds difference between the two clocks, so Pennsylvania should get it back. Backdoor cut by Bron Holland, and he's fouled by Ray Marshall. And this will be the 10th team foul on Pennsylvania, so it will be an automatic two-shot foul. That's the new rule right now. Here's the look from Levers to Holland. Got it to him a little bit low on the good flash, and Marshall called with the body. Ron Holland, a transfer from St. Bonaventure University. Out of Banger, Pennsylvania, that's justified. Because he indeed is a banger. And Eddie getting in position to join us for a, a halftime interview. As soon as our first half ends, but first Ron Holland with a chance to extend the lead. I've got Eddie's son sitting next to me right now. It's a lot more fun to have his kids sitting here than it is to have Eddie. Don't have to share the mic. Well, you're welcome to join on if you want to. 35-27. Donnie Shelton checks in, replacing Bron Holland. 
Shot clock has been turned off. Pennsylvania spreads the floor. No one within 20 feet of the basket. And Speedy Morris will not challenge. So Purdy can play catch with Barry Pierce. And with 15, here they go into the set. McAllister. And all three freshmen on the perimeter. Purdy, McAllister, and Pierce. High, low look. Marshall wants to back it back out. Five seconds left. Turnover. Good defense, says Speedy Morris. With three seconds remaining. Eighth turnover on Pennsylvania. Heard to trigger for the final three seconds. Overton cuts. Gets open floor and a screen. No, no good. And that will not count. So we have reached halftime of our second game of our Palestra doubleheader. The LaSalle Explorers have let it pretty much start to finish and have built a 36-27 lead on Fran Dunphy and the Pennsylvania Quakers. And Eddie Stefanski will meet with the host here at Pennsylvania. As we said, it is the pupil, Fran Dunphy, against the former teacher, Speedy Morris. And let's go uh, get set for Ed Stefanski to meet with Fran Dunphy, his club trailing by nine as we've reached halftime at the Palestra. And cross court we go to Ed Stefanski. Fran, you played pretty well in the first half, but it's tough to cover Doug Overton. How do you cover uh, with Hurd and Overton in that lineup? Well, I, I tell you, that, so, two of the threes that Doug just made were just fantastic. I thought they were 26 the feet, 27 feet. So it's hard for us to go out that far and get him, but we're going to have to make some adjustments, obviously, obviously to play him in the second half. I thought Jack heard us a couple times coming over the screen on their uh, flex offense, and we didn't get off into the ball very well. But those two guys certainly hurt us, and Newbauer made a couple threes. It doesn't help the situation any. Comment on the meaningful minutes uh, that the freshman gave you off the bench. Yeah, well, you know, it, we've been trying to bring them along kind of slowly, but they're good players, and uh, we've got to give them some minutes right away. So I'm, I'm happy about it. They made some mistakes, but I, I think it's good to get them some uh, minutes under fire here against a real good team. Randy, good luck in the second half. Thanks, Ed. Okay, Fran Dumpy's going to go back and make some adjustments, Mark Rose. Excuse me, Larry Rose. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that would happen to you sooner or later. That's all right. I got the most articulate member of the family right here, Kevin Stefanski, joining us. Eddie's son sitting in while Eddie does the interview. Nice to see you, young man. And we'll get set to tell you about our halftime uh, feature. You know, four years of Lionel Simmons, more than 3,000 career points. A wonderful run for Lionel and Speedy. Lionel has, of course, taken that next step. He's a millionaire. He's done it all just the way the book as he would have written it. Let's check out what's up with Lionel as Lionel came home to Philadelphia. It worked when he owned the public league hardwood. See where it's it going. worked when he led LaSalle to glory, scoring over 3,000 points. But will it work on the highest court in the land? I'm learning each game. I'm getting better each game. And uh, I'm just trying to add on to some of the things that I, I brought to the pro game. And hopefully to well-rounded, that'll make me a better player. He is a young man who belongs to Philadelphia. Basketball fans in this area have had a stake in the growth of this homegrown hero now for seven years. Lionel Simmons, who chose to be a part of this community, to heed the advice and remain a child of the city. Now, though, Lionel is a man. The choice was no longer his. At the other forward is what he sees in the south. He is as far away as possible in the oft-ignored, oft-forgotten NBA outpost known as Sacramento. It has Lionel dialing long distance. But I don't mind being away from home. Uh, my phone bill is very high, but, you know, I, I can't afford it now. And, uh, you know, I just you know, welcomed the opportunity to play in the NBA, and I knew it would, it would be traveling, and I knew that, you know, the likelihood of me playing close to home was uh, virtually just about impossible. And uh, so I knew all that going in, and, you know, my ultimate dream was to play in the NBA, and I'm glad I was able to fulfill it. One significant new experience for Lionel is losing. The Kings can lose more in an NBA weekend than Lionel did his entire senior season. So at first blush, Sacramento did not appear to be a blessing. But look closer. 
I'm getting better every game, you know, and you get more and more confidence and you know, the more minutes you get helps. And I think that, you know, each game I, I'm learning to do something different. I'm learning how to get my shot off. And uh, in the first couple of games, I wasn't able to do that. And now I'm just trying to, to work on uh, the little things that it takes a bigger play. And off the court, the transition has been made easier by the nature of the Kings roster. Four first round draft picks, including Temple's Dwayne Coswell. Nine new players from a year ago mean no existing clicks. To a certain extent, you know, I think I matured, but the players on the team make it hard for me to mature because we're, we're so loose and humorous that, you know, it's hard to, to really take something serious. But uh, I think I have matured somewhat, but I, I still have some maturing to do, and I'm sure I, it'll come within the next couple of months. Homecoming. The dream comes full circle. Lionel leads the Kings back to the spectrum on Thanksgiving Eve. He is honored at center court pregame as last year's outstanding collegiate player. Lionel only had to come up with 150 tickets on this night and still had to say no to many more requests. He will always be a special ticket in this town and the train would not disappoint. Posting 20 points, 13 rebounds as his club took the Sixers to the buzzer. Nice play by Simmons. Lionel Simmons. And after the game, once the disappointment dissipates, it is again a time for blessings to be counted. His beaming mother, Ruth, no longer holding two jobs. Her son has kept all his promises, buying her a home with his first professional paycheck. It is a whirlwind lifestyle climbing the professional mountain. There's been little time to stop and simply take it all in. Yet those who know Lionel Simmons, who've been privy to his development as a player and as a young man, know he was raised with the gift of perspective. And nothing, not the spotlight, not the millions, or even the ultimate professional success can take that away. It's like a book and I wrote it. You know, I wrote it exactly the way it could happen. You know, I want to do well in high school and going to college. I did well in college and going to the NBA. And now I just have to excel here, and that's going to take some time. But, you know, I don't think I could have painted the picture any better. You know, I'm doing what I've always enjoyed doing, and I'm getting paid to do it. After vacationing across America and throughout Europe, Take it, Russ. this holiday season, the Griswolds are going to play it safe. Locking and rolling Spectrum. It's still quiet in the Spectrum right now. And we'll go down there, get a preview of tonight's game from our own Prism's Mark Zuma. Mark? Actually, Larry, it's not too quiet here. We do have some would-be Larry Birds and Charles Barkley's with us. But I remember doing a story on the Sixers-Celtics rivalry some years back. And I recall a player telling me, as long as both teams are good, the rivalry will stay alive. And indeed, it is alive. The Celtics right now in first place in the Atlantic. They are three games ahead of the second-place Sixers. They have a new head coach and Chris Ford, a younger, quicker backcourt, and of course they still have Larry Bird, who of course must still contend with number 34, Charles Barkley. Well, I like the challenge, and, and there's no better challenge than Charles Barkley. There's no question about that. Charles is in his prime right now, and I've already been through my prime, so I, I doubt if I'm... Down with Pennsylvania. And Stefanski, we spoke in the very beginning that Pennsylvania needed some outside offense, uh, some inside offense to open up the outside. The offense has been tough to come by for Pennsylvania. Yeah, I think it's going to be that way all year with Hossam Duncan not eligible to play this year. But Freddie Dumphy has to come up with something, and I think you've seen it early in the season in the third game. The freshmen are going to be prominent this year at the Quakers. Meantime, for a Speedy Morris, he knows his points will likely come off the guard line even without Randy Woods. Got a lot of good offense early on from Overton and from Hurd. Oh, Jackie Hurd can play the game. As we said, he had struggled a little bit last year, but when you put Woods... Uh, Overton and Hurd together at some kind of backcourt. Well, we'll show you just what those two young men can do, uh, either from distance or, or from the paint. Here, uh, Hurd layup off the break. Good penetration here by Doug Overton. Two Penn Quakers, and then there's the easy two for Jackie Hurd. You want to see range? Wow. Here's some range. If they're talking about where can he shoot it from, 
And that is NBA range right there. Nothing but net. And as Fran Dunphy alluded to, Doug Overton is a terrific player. And Overton and Hurd lead the LaSalle Explorers. Lionel Simmons told us that Dougie couldn't shoot a lick when he got in from Dobbins. And he taught him the last couple of years. And now quite a shooter. There's the uh, the stats. As 26 of their uh, 36 will come from those two big scorers. Meantime, on the other end, we've spoken already about the contribution of the freshman. Here, of course, the first one comes from Barry Pierce. Barry Pierce, a local young man from Norristown, Pennsylvania. Good move. Crossover, stops, doesn't overpenetrate, and knocks down two. Paul Chambers not known for his penetration. Here he gets a nice little uh, inside move. Misses, and then says, why not again? Doesn't take the two, but gets the three. Why not? And there's the way they've spread the scoring. Chambers, Volopsky, Curran, Purdy, Pierce, and McMahon are all on the board. In terms of team statistics, the shooting percentages are not that strong. LaSalle at 43%, Pennsylvania at 38.5. And the rebounding margin, not, uh, not what you might have expected. LaSalle just by three. And we talked about the key stat of three-point shooting. You know LaSalle's going to live from out there. You almost have to match them three for three. Well, you know, the LaSalle this year without Lionel Simmons, who could go out and shoot the three, they will still have three good players from three-point range. But as a couple people in the Big Five and other opposing coaches said, when they shoot that three, Lionel Simmons won't be in there if they miss. So there's some glimmer of hope for the opposing teams. You know, we look back at the Temple LaSalle game from 1985 a couple of days ago, the first time the rule had gone into effect for uh, the three-point shot. And Speedy Morris was your guest at halftime and said, I hate it. Get this rule out of here. It hurts the game. I can't stand it. Well, then, of course, like all other coaches, you realize that if it's in there, you got to coach to it, and few people go to it the way Speedy does now. Yeah, Speedy's not a fool. Some people would argue that point, but he knew that he had the shooters, and he went to it. And Woods, who's not playing today, Randy Woods, he can shoot it, and he'll shoot it from distance, but when Randy Woods comes back into this lineup, the quickness and the pressure that you'll see LaSalle uh, put out on the court will be just devastating. Well, LaSalle's been able to sit back in his zone for the entire half. Yeah, and when why Speedy's in the zone, too, he's come out a little bit, a little pressure, but he doesn't want to get in foul trouble. So it's working to Speedy Morris's favor, but we've seen a lot of big five games, and this will be going down. Penn's going to make a run out of it. Oh, yeah. Ken Grab 0 for 5 from the floor, 0 for 3 from a three-point range. He is the designated bomber. Need to get him off. Yeah, but the problem is LaSalle knows that, too, and they're extending that zone defense, and he's a standstill type shooter. That's why I think Franny Dumpy has gone to the more athletic freshman right now. So we shall see what unfolds as we begin half number two. Of course, if you weren't with us for the first game, the women of the South, the women of Pennsylvania, 74-67. You know, the, the, the men's women's double headers, especially in the Big Five, in the second half of the game, the women are now playing before three, 4,000 people. We've got 4,000 plus in the house this afternoon. It's nice to hear all that noise for the women's game. It's going to be a big throw for them. And I think it's great. And the women have come, obviously, a long way with basketball. And as I alluded to before, they can really shoot the ball. Uh, now a lot of them will be able to shoot off the dribble and do a lot of things. But standstill shooters, I'll match them with a lot of the men. <laughs> And here we go. We'll set the floor. LaSalle brings out Hurd, Overton, Neubauer, Levers, and Precedent. Pennsylvania will open with the ball and with Chambers, Graf, McMahon, Curran, and Marshall. And we look over and see a 3-2 LaSalle zone defense. Right to the high post for Marshall. Good ball swing for McMahon. And Franny's thrilled right there. Yeah, that's real important. They come out offensively and score right away. Jack Hurd, no post up for Levers. Did he step in the line? No, it's good. And the push foul by either Marshall or McMahon. And that's not as good right there. The penetration they gave up to Hurd. Here it's a bad foul by McMahon. Just pushes right there. Milko Levers, not a real offensive threat inside, but when he gets that close, he is. The young man had arthroscopic knee surgery about five weeks ago. Didn't practice fully, but was ready to go on opening day. This is that precedent bodying up, but Graf comes away with the ball. And it's 38-29, just underway, half number two. Similar set now with Ray Marshall floating through the paint. Graf has time to load. Big shot. 
And that's what he can do. We talked about Ken Graff, standstill shooter. LaSalle knows that from the scouting report. Doug Overton, flat in his own back, has to get a hand in his face. Milko from distance. Speedy's going to go to his bench, I think, and take Milko out on that shot. I don't know what Milko's thinking, 17 feet from the basket. Grab another one. Rebound McMahon. Good position. Yes. And he got the roll there, Paul McMahon. A little bit short, but the nice spin hit the front of the Pelester rim and rolled in for him. Indeed, Donnie Shelton already at the scorer's table, likely to get Milko Levers. Heard. Oh. A silencer. Jackie Heard. We know he can shoot the basketball. Now he shows us how he can go off the dribble and shoot it also. He's got 14, building a nice ball game. He had such a great freshman year at LaSalle. Fell off, but again, he had a lot of good players in that lineup last year. Current misses the 12-footer. That's the first time he's turned and shot, even though he's caught the ball on that spot six or seven times. So maybe they'll respect a little. Over it into Dish. Precedent. Block for the rear. Over it has it back. Fades. And if LaSalle's going to upset LaSalle this afternoon, they have to get those rolls. Right there, they played a pretty good defense, offensive rebound. McMahon. Uh, Levers will be called for over the back of Vince Curran. There's Vince Curran, uses his body extremely well. Got inside Milko Levers, he's a wide body, as we said. Almost got the tip and had a three-point opportunity. And Shelton is indeed in. Levers will sit. That substitution was made when Milko took the 17-footer. Oh, he knows Speedy Mars better than that. He went through the whole season last year with him. No way should Milko Levers be shooting that 17-footer. Speedy told him. Here's Vince Curran. Got the first. Curran with eight rebounds already. Out of St. Joe's prep. Makes a pair. Jack Hurd. The loose balls that belong to LaSalle early in half number two. It's over to through the legs on Graff. Wants it. Got it. Smiles. Big smile on Dougie's face. That's just a real sweet move by Doug Overton. Just ducked under the defense. High post entry for Marshall. Low post lift for Curran. He's screamed by Neubauer. He'll go back to the foul line. Franny's got to love the execution. Yeah, good job. They're playing much better here early in the first half. Here's the pass inside to Ray Marshall. Good bounce pass, another good bounce pass, and Neubauer does a good job not letting Vince Curran get the three-point chance. He's a strong man at the line, Vince Curran. Not highly recruited, but came to Pennsylvania, an excellent student out of St. Joseph's Prep. Does a real nice job as an intense young man and plays extremely hard for Fran Dumper. His entire team has the uh, the blue and white sneakers, but this likes the red and white high top look. So, the rugged individualist that he is. Vince goes to his own drum, that's for without sure. Without a doubt. No, sorry, he's my own man. Over to for Neubauer for three. And that's something Jeff Neubauer hasn't been doing, hitting those three. He has three this evening, all his points coming from the three-point line. Kind of a push shot. Needs a while to get rid of it. McMahon. Good chance. What that three point does, Larry, is up to 10 already. They had it down to four, the Quakers did. It's up to 10. Advantage for Urbisau. Look for Groff here. There he is with plenty of room off the penetration. That is excellent, excellent form. Stayed with it all the way to Ken Graff. Followed through with the wrist. Has nine second half points on three three-pointers. We're seeing two push shooters here. Ken Graff for Penn and we saw Jeff Neubauer for LaSalle. And there's another one. That's why Milko sat down. Dottie says, I can hit this one. And I'm sure <laughs> they'll be teasing Milko Lieber said, Milko, is this what you want to try to do from 17? <laughs> if he misses, is he sitting too? Well, we won't know that. <laughs> That's an over and back. That's an over and back. Well, that went off the chest of uh, Ray Marshall and then the hands of Paul Chambers. And Speedy's somewhat apoplectic, but backs off. 
inside Curran, head and shoulders, no, but he'll be back on the foul line once more as they call it on Jack Hurd. Well, right there, the Pennsylvania Quakers are a little lucky as Vince Curran gets it inside. He's not real effective right here. He's in big trouble, leaning away. Donnie Shelton has to leave him alone and not pick up the foul. But well, they called it on Hurd for the reach-in. Third, since Vince Curran. Well, Vince Curran was in trouble there. I don't think he was going to make it leaning away. But he's going to go to the line have a chance to get two. Knocks it down. And it's 7 for 10 from the free throw line. And they stay within striking distance. They're on their feet across from us. Big man to Malofsky on the baseline. That's what I like about Mike Malofsky. He's not afraid to shoot the basketball. He'll step in in a tough situation as he did against SMU the other night and will shoot the ball. It's a four-point game. Near steel grab, Overton, an All-American shot right there. There's the problem. I mean, Graff had an opportunity to steal, but you can't go for the steal when your assignment is Doug Overton. You just got to play the man. Dougie's got 19. Chambers in with the trees for Graff. It's Malofsky high post, current low post. McMahon rattles it down. McMahon playing within the offense gets his eighth point. We'll stay here. Well, right there, Vince Curran never left his feet. He used his left arm, just held the LaSalle player to the floor. He's so strong and tried to rebound him with his right arm. Never left his feet. It's Ray Schultz who will inbound. Dougie. Ron Holland bails him out. Another tip. 12 hands in the air, three bodies on the ground. It belongs to Jeff Newbauer. You think the Quakers want this game? Really? The sound, the Quakers going at it. Dougie again for three. That's three straight times. He's walked up and just taken a three-pointer at Paul Chambers on the arm of Ron Holland. That was just frustration as Penn has played good defense. They just can't come up with the rebound. And Speedy Morris is going with the big lineup in Bron Holland, Ray Schultz, and Milko Levers, and it's paying off for Speedy Morris. Paul Chambers now with the four personal fouls. Speedy still looks at the fashion plate. The tie's still on. There's Chambers sitting down. So he's got four, and Marshall has four. I wonder why GQ has never called Speedy up. I can't understand it. <laughs> Schultz. To Holland, one dribble, big move, and the foul. They're gonna. Oh, the the perimeter referee had it good yeah. on the foul, and the interior referee had no basket. Let's see. Brian Holland makes good move. I don't even know if the if the Penn Quaker is in position for the offensive foul. Here's the good hard move. Yeah, it's a good call because Vince Kern was there. Now that the basketball released early, the official says no. It's a four-point ball game. Here's LaSalle extending out a little bit with some token pressure. It's man to man for the first time. Now they're ready to play. And McMahon comes over, yells to the freshman Purdy what we're going to run, the man offense. It's a screen for Graff. And he'll fire for three. <laughs> oh. Well, what happened is Vince Curran sets a big screen on Doug Overton. No help. And he hits the three. Graff has 12 on four three-pointers in the second half. High low, Schultz to Levers, over current. No, tip Schultz. Another one off his hands. We'll stay here. Got lucky there because I think that it was off the LaSalle. Oh yeah, well it came clearly off the hands with no touch. Time to catch our breath as Pennsylvania's closed it to one point with 11.46 remaining at the Palestra. 
The VHP picture. Very well in half number two, like this time. Watch the screen by double zero, Vince Curran. Just takes Overton out of play. There's Levers who leaves wide open. Ken Graff, who he's been saying all night, a standstill shooter can knock it down. You have to get a hand in on him. It's a one-point contest. And Doug Overton's been guilty of quick shooting several times in the last four or five minutes or so. See what kind of set they run. Three-point shooting now favors the Quakers. Jack Hurt's been out of the lineup for a while. Motion set. Overton forces another. Barely catches iron. Rebound, Ken Graff. The Explorers are cold. The Quakers can take the lead. Bad shot selection by Doug Overton there. Instead of just running the offense, getting it something offensively out of the flow. Man to man. And McMahon will take Ray Schultz. Hang it shy. Overton's got a lot of floor. Wow. Another bad shot out of Dougie. And he knows it's, it's pretty much his team right now. Lionel's gone, Randy Woods is not playing just yet, and Dougie trying to do a little bit too much. He says he's getting fouled and hit on the elbow, but right there, a rush shot, but right there, we came down the other end, and Paul McMahon didn't take a real good shot. So two decisions by two players were not real good, but there's a foul, and they're going to go to the line, and Penn can take the advantage if they make both. LaSalle with 17 fouls, Pennsylvania with just four. And Mike Malofsky on the foul line. Again, Dan Purdy is in, the freshman for Chambers. We're tied. Barry, freshman, Barry Pierce, another freshman, is also in. I'll tell you right now, Dan Purdy and Barry Pierce in this game in the Big Five know they made the right decision to come to the University of Pennsylvania. This is a fun time to play the basketball. And Pennsylvania's taking a lead. Their first of the contest. They want a five-second count. Double teaming on Holland. They split off that. Over to with Dan Purdy, the freshman. To Jack Hurd, who's back in the ball game. Yeah, they're fouling. Called. They got away with a few fouls. Yeah. Graff was all over Overton fouling him, and right there Pierce picks it up. And Pierce not shy to let the referee knows he disagrees. Four-man stack set. They split off it for Milko. Wide open Holland. Blown assignment. He's got Graff on him who lays down. That's Purdy on him and he misses the layup. And it's Ken Graff. Pierce goes baseline. That's a big time move by Barry Pierce. He recognized the LaSalle defender rushing at him. Made the fake and went by him for a big two. We'll enjoy the Pennsylvania faithful for the moment. As they build a 55-52 lead, courtesy of Barry Pierce. See, Pierce had the three-point shot right now, but he recognized that Mil Milko Levers was flying at him. Stopped and took the two. I mean, this is a freshman, and that's a real nice controlled basket by Barry Pierce from Norristown, Pennsylvania. And let's visit the guy that looks like a genius so far today, Fran Dunphy. write anything down during that timeout. I don't think that was an execution-oriented timeout. I think there might have been some other things being talked well, about. I think Speedy right now knows it, and he'll agree that, it was, uh, excuse me, the Quakers are just out hustling the set of out scores, getting on more loose balls, very aggressive defensively, and some maybe bad selection of shots by LaSalle have gotten down by three. And you put freshmen and transfers on the floor, and they don't know that they're not supposed to beat LaSalle. Why not, you know? No intimidation being shown at all, and Franny's got to be happy with that side. 
Jack Kerr has been quiet second half offensively. We'll take the freshman to the baseline. No roll. Good tip, Levers. Yeah, Mokko Levers has a big oh, shot by him right on and stayed hard on the basket. Over Vince Carroll on the weak side. Mike Polopsky in his first big five action. Graham has time. Nice bounce pass. Curran bangs the body. Jump ball. Dual possession as Brad Holland met Vince Curran. And it belongs to the South. Well, here's, the, here's where Vince is not as effective. They got the ball in. He has to put the ball twice on the floor. Right there, Brian Holland steps in, up and down, or they call it a jump ball. So it'll be the South basketball. Overton steps away from pressure. His team trails by one. You're seeing the same thing. You saw Mark make it the other night. Very tough with the double team. Same thing with Overton in the open court. Nice screen. Levers for her. No, but on the arm. Grant Dumpy goes, oh, you're crazy, as it's called for being on the elbow, which will leave Jack Kerr on the foul line. Well, his players have been playing strong, hard man-to-man -man against LaSalle here. That's what's got him back in the contest. Very aggressive, and the official caught Jackie Hurd hit him on the elbow. Second foul on the freshman Barry Pierce. Hurd ties it. Coach Mars LaSalle wants to show some pressure back to the Quakers. Won't get the chance. Oh, Milko with the loose one misses. Newbauer to Holland at the foul line. And the offensive rebound will give a coach a receding hairline. I'll tell you what, this kid Jeff Newbauer is all over the floor. He may not be the greatest player, but he gives a lot. He's always given what he has. They spread the floor over to back and down on Purdy. In the air, way off target. Levers again. Throws it up. Can't get it. It's hers. And the foul on Wolofsky. And Speedy must have told his charges last time out. Hey, we may not make our shots, but hammer the glass. We, we talked about Penn being more aggressive. Well, right now, after that timeout, LaSalle's extremely aggressive. The bodies is flying all over the place, but Jackie Hurd keeps it alive here, and he gets fouled. There's Jackie Hurd, 25. He's about 6'6". Six, six. He's real strong in there, and he gets fouled. Malofsky over the top. Randy pulls the trigger with 8.46 remaining. Goes back to Paul Chambers despite the four fouls. Needs some offensive continuity. I think he has to because the pressure's there. The Sal, a one-point lead. And on the offensive glass, unofficially, the Sal, 18 to 6 over Pennsylvania. One out of two again. Another offensive rebound by Neubauer. Overton's got a three. That's a killer right there. Penn's been playing extremely well. The foul shot can't come up with the rebounder. Neubauer all over the floor. And despite some poor uh, shot selection by Overton, he still has 22 to lead all scorers. Will McAllister, number 30 in for Pennsylvania. Curran, the big screen. Chambers around it, around everybody. That's a big bucket. And he's taking a chance, Paul Chambers, driving all the way to the hoop. If LaSalle could have stepped in, they would have got his fifth on the offensive foul. High post foul line extended. Holland turns. Hard cut, Overton. Over Chambers, offensive foul, Doug Overton. Well, I'll tell you what, Doug Overton went up for the shot, and if we have it, Paul Chambers just put his body right under him to get the offensive foul. Here's the good back door, straight up, gets right in there. I don't know who got the contact, but Doug Overton might have been leaning in. That's a tough call. Chambers is still on the floor. That could have been his fifth. Now he's matched up with Neubauer. As Ray Marshall's in with four personal fouls. He'll go to SWAT. It goes back to Marshall from Chambers. We're tied again. Good give and go. Old basketball there. The screen and the give and go back to Ray Marshall. Overton has a baseline step. Levers doesn't think about it this time. Uh-uh. I want to play more. Doug Overton unconscious. And over the back comes Levers. Good position, Ray Marshall. It'll be a one-and-one, one, as that's the ninth team foul on LaSalle. 
You have a lot of young men on this floor giving it all they have. And Ray Marshall today, this afternoon has played a real nice ball game. Did a good job getting his body in front there. Milko Liebers tried to go over the top of Marshall, put his body on him. Marshall could give Pennsylvania the lead. Roderick Precedent will come back in, replacing Ron Holland. So the Sal is back with its starting five. Trailing by one with the basketball, approaching seven minutes. Larry Rosen, Ed Stefanski live on Prism. The second of our basketball triple header on Prism today. The Sixers and Celtics to follow at 7.30, but you knew that. Levers from 16, you better. Well, what they did is they ran the good offense there. Smilko Levers got the 15-footer. If they just are patient offensively, they'll get a shot. LaSalle back up one. Barry Pierce, baseline runner, no. Good weak side board. Marshall kicks it for Chambers. We'll go the other way. Granny wanted that one. Jackie Hurd turns and fires. Levers another offensive board. Their 20th Hurd again in and out. And this time Vince Curran runs it down. Will they go three on three? McAllister, block foul called on Jeff Neubauer. Will McAllister, very fortunate here. He's, he's made a move, but he's not under control. He's trying to get a ball there. They called it a block on Neubauer. Could have gone either way. Will McAllister has to control his feet there, either get it back out or stop and take the jump shot. And Paul McMahon will replace Barry Pierce, who gave Franny some real solid minutes. The freshman guard out of the Hill School. Will McAllister has the line. Has shots. We're retied with 6.08 remaining. Will McAllister, a very good player in Highland Regional in Blackwood, New Jersey. Played very good basketball there. McAllister is a big step up in the freshman year. He makes two. Now all fouls against LaSalle the rest of the way will be two-shot fouls. Pennsylvania has seven, so they're in the one-and-one one for the next three. Overton. Levers pops out. Neubauer's three. Another offensive rebound. There's your storyline, Eddie. Turned for three. Chambers beats him on the spot. But the rush shot by the South, they ran the offense and just rotated a couple times to get a good shot. They've got to have, have some more patience on offense. Especially when you don't have the big guy inside there rebounding those misses. The Sal is two for eight from three-point range this half. Marshall cutting current, fade away. And look what I found, Ray Marshall, and knows what to do with it. They gotta be lucky sometimes there. Vince Curran has the fade away, he doesn't make it. It just comes back into the hands of Ray Marshall. Ray Marshall, just a strong player. Here's the fade away. Good defense there by Milko Levers, just comes right back in the hands off of a LaSalle player. That's the most athletic move I think my man Ray Marshall's ever made. And he got foul number four on Broderick Precedent, who sits down for Ron Holland. Could we consider that hanging in the air for Ray Marshall? <laughs> yes, it is hanging in the air for him. Even the slow mo doesn't look like it's <laughs> up there too long. Elton Baylor is not in trouble. Oh, he banks there you go. the <laughs> shot. You gotta love it. He's luck. He called glass, and Penn's longest lead of the night or afternoon is at four. Glad you're with us as Speedy Morris wants a timeout of the 505 bar. We have heated up the palestra. Welcome to Big Five Basketball. We'll come back in just a moment. That's it. That's her. No, 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 no. Back up. Stop it there. Yeah, look at that face. 
That's Shelly, the most beautiful girl on campus. Unfortunately, I wasn't the only one that thought so. Listen, little man, and listen good. I'm telling you in a nice way. You stay away from my woman. Comprende? That's Brad, the muscle head that stood between me and the girl of my dreams. Andy, I'm in deep, man. If, if I don't get close to this girl, I am going to blow everything. Oh, what a jerk. It was at this point that Andy came up with his brilliant plan. And like a geek, I went for it. If I couldn't get close to her as a guy, maybe I could get close to her as a girl. Dad always said college would change my life. Stanley, not on the first date. Nobody's perfect. A comedy that's a love story in disguise. This has really slowly built into what could be a classic final five minutes. Pennsylvania, a four-point lead, playing quite aggressively. In terms of team fouls, Pennsylvania with seven. LaSalle with ten. Pennsylvania with three timeouts remaining. Speedy's been forced to use a couple. He's got just one left. And a live bound right in front of Speedy. to Doug Overton. And the offensive rebound totals 21 for LaSalle, 8 for Pennsylvania. Holland, high low with Levers, foul mitts Curry. And that was a bad decision by Brian Holland to pass. Vince Curran fouled him, but I don't think Michael Levers was really going to catch that basketball coming across the lane like that. You've got to make a bounce pass here. I mean, the lob pass to Milko, he's not going to be able to catch it behind him. Interesting to see uh, Speedy go to a low set off the out-of-bounds to try to get uh, something on the inside. Maybe with Ray Marshall's four fouls, he's looking in that direction. Speedy's man-to-man -man offense on a half-court set. It's real good if the players will execute it. And make the extra pass. Levers has it. Target, offensive rebound, bad pass, Jack Hurd. Ron Holland bails him out. Knocked out of bounds, Paul McMahon. So that is the 22nd offensive rebound for LaSalle. Well, I guess you could call the Quakers scrappy, and it's just LaSalle is just out rebounding the offensive end. Quakers are trying to go for the ball, but they're the taller foot scorers. Good job, Will McAllister following Doug Overton. Hurd with McMahon. Another nice matchup. Holland had Levers, chose not to make the pass. Here's Overton at the foul line. Well, some patience on this set. Yeah, let's see if they can get anything out of it. They have a Levers foul shot. Long, offensive pull, Jack Hurd, laid up and good. Jack Hurd is using his 6'6 frame and really making havoc inside with the Penn Quakers. It's a one-point Pennsylvania lead. 18 for Hurd. 23 offensive rebounds, a 3-1 to one margin on the offensive glass for LaSalle. That's why they're still in it. McAllister to the paint. Levers the board. Three on two. Overton stops at the line. Short. Another offensive board. Interior look for Hurd. Lay it up. No! No! I mean, the Penn Quakers had that one. Vince Curran off his head. Check, he heard Mr. Duck, and he's smiling. He knew it. it was wide open. Chambers spins on Neubauer. They're going to a spread here with 323 remaining. Franny says, let's use as much as we can. Yeah, he's just trying to run that 45-second clock down, and then he'll go into the offense. They go into the offense with 20. It's a double high post set with Curran and Marshall. McMahon gets a Marshall screen. That was a walk, but Chambers is in the corner and in the air, and good! Well, the Penn basket has been real nice to him in the second half. As Paul Chambers stopped and took the jumper, he gives the Penn Quakers a three-point advantage. He's got 11. Low post, Holland. Drop step to the baseline. Pretty. Yeah, that's, he can't execute much better than that. Brian Holland just took his defender off him. Three-man weave 
on the front side. Trying to take this clock down. We're at 2.15 in the game clock. 25 on the shot clock. Timeout, Fran Dunphy. And we'll keep it here live. Pennsylvania now has two timeouts remaining and a one-point lead. Well, now with the and a reminder that, sorry, Eddie, the movie Feds, which was scheduled to get started shortly, will not be seen this evening. We're obviously going to complete our basketball game. And then we've got 76ers Celtics basketball at 7.30 live here on Prism. And between the two, we will have a Jim Barniak sports scrapbook between our coverage from the Palestra and Jim, Jack, and Mark's coverage from down at the Spectrum. Harry, when they call timeout like this, Randy Dumpy wants to make sure they execute the offense. They have 23 seconds up to 45 seconds off. But the one thing, and a lot of teams will do, and we'll see if LaSalle does it, is try that out-of-bounds pass from the sideline. It's a very difficult pass to get in. Let's see if LaSalle tries to overplay. Let's check out Franny's huddle. Okay, we can't really eavesdrop all that well. So many times we see where the man that makes the pass in is not covered, steps right back in off it. Now, I don't think Speedy's going to let Fran get away with something. Well, like the one thing they won't, I don't think that will happen because there's 23 seconds left. I think Franny wants to get the ball in and run it off. And he definitely wants to run a set play and try to get a shot. Now, he'd love to get Ken Graff wide open for a three. So LaSalle has to play that good, hard man-to-man -man defense. They're going to let him get the ball in bounds easily. Again, the shot clock rolling now at 18. Double high set with Perrin and Marshall. Graff has over to screen from Perrin. Mismatch. If they can get it to Curran, they do. He's got over to pin. Make it Vince. Yes! Franny's got to be thrilled with that. That's good execution. He got the smaller man, Doug Overton, on the taller man, Vince Curran. Vince Curran not noted for that outside shot, but he gets it home. He's got 13. Now see if Doug Overton looks to take over on the other end. Picks up his dribble. Needs some help. Has Holland. Great ball fake Brock. Holland! Yes! Oh, tremendous execution on both sides down the stretch. Ron Holland has shown us two straight offensive positions. Real good big man moves. One point advantage for the Quakers. With the ball in the spread. Chambers takes it in, brings it out. The other thing is the South fouls here at the two-shot foul because they're in the over 10 fouls. That's a king. We have 1-11 and counting. 20 on the shot clock. Her Chambers calls the play. Same set, double highs. Curran pops out. McMahon on the other side. Steal Jack Hurd. It bounces off the official. Oh, my goodness. That was an uncontested slam for Hurd. Chambers with five on the shot clock. In trouble. Has grabbed with two. One. No. 51 seconds and counting. Overton open floor. Down by one. No timeout. Dougie pulls it out and calls the set. They can almost hold for one. Five second difference. Speedy says, I'm going to use the timeout. Maybe my last one, but I'm going to use it right here. What a sequence off the body of the official. Well, Jackie Hurd, the LaSalle Sport defender, anticipated the pass from Vince Curran. Great defense by Hurd. He slaps it away. He slaps it away towards his basket. He was going to go home and jam. And the official trying to get back just goes off his back. Here you go. Vince Curran's not making a good pass here. There is the breakaway, and it's hit the back of the official. Jackie Hurd can't get it. Speedy goes crazy, but that's just one of the things. And it comes back, but LaSalle plays good defense and gets the basketball back. Chambers had the presence of mind to know the shot clock was rolling down. They actually got a decent shot. Here we go. Now, Larry Penn has 18 fouls. So if they would foul LaSalle, LaSalle would have to go to the line with the one-on-one, -on -one, put the pressure on that first shot. So that's something that Fran Dumpy has to talk about, that they may have to foul. 33 seconds to go. If they let LaSalle just take it down, take the shot, at least they'll have six seconds left to try to either win it or hold the ball. There's the key stats for the final 39 seconds of this one. The possession arrow favors the Explorers. 
who are out of timeouts, down by a point, well over the limit. And as Eddie mentioned, a foul, non-shooting foul by Pennsylvania would mean one and one. See, here's the thing, trying to get the ball in bounds. Let's see if the Quakers put some kind of pressure. A big man can step out and get it right now. There it, it is. Like Levers. And it's Graff that's head up on Overton. And that's a good move. Graff's trying to not let Doug Overton get the ball back with a foul. And that's a one and one. And a speedy high fives with Dougie. And he's a real good free throw shooter, obviously. He's only four out of seven coming in in that first game against Loyola. It was a good idea by the Penn Quakers, Ken Graff, not to let Overton, but he's so quick a foot that he, right there, Ken Graff had a hold. Doug Overton going to the line for a big one-on-one. And, one. and Pennsylvania's had a lot of time, a lot of trouble boxing out on these. And Fran Duffy doesn't want that to happen again, so he'll call timeout knowing he's got one more remaining after this one. I think that's a real good point. I think, Byron, they have to put all five of their players on the foul line, the Penn Quakers. They, if, they, if Overton would miss, that would be a crusher if LaSalle got the basketball back. I expected a good one. I thought LaSalle definitely has the better talent right now, and I thought they would put Penn away, but you've got to give Penn a lot of credit. Graham Dumpy's done a real nice job early in the season, had the big win against SMU this week. He's come back and has given LaSalle everything they can handle. See Dougie Overton, the smaller guard at 6'3". Vince Curran, the fadeaway, nothing but net from 15 feet. Big bucket by the by Curran, but here's Brian Holland. Good fake, gets Curran off the feet, right in, and gets the roll. And that leaves us at Pennsylvania 69, LaSalle 68, with 33 seconds remaining at the Palestra. saying in the huddle right now, Doug, when you make the two, you always want to tell the kid, get that confidence that the coach knows he's going to make the two. I know when you coach, you're not so sure, but Dougie Overton, his captain, his star is on the line. Probably don't want to have better people than Doug Overton on the line right now. And should he make both, will Pennsylvania take it right to the buzzer? I would think they'll go for the W, yes. No problem, Dougie ties it up. Stairs up at the scoreboard. Gets a kiss on the head from Milko Levers. We're tied at 69. Dougie with 24. Brady's got one timeout remaining. Chambers penetrates. Dishes it back for McMahon. He penetrates to the air. for staying for the last shot. I thought they were out of control there. I thought Chambers over-penetrated. I think McMahon over-penetrated. Let's see if he got away with one. Yeah, that's an offensive foul. He might have got fouled earlier right. with the reach-in, but they didn't call that. No, they right didn't here, call that. Brian Holland, there's a foul, but there's the offensive foul. What did they call the bucket they called good? It, right, the bucket is good, and the foul is on Brian Holland. Oh, okay, it's on Brian Holland. But so then they, on Brian Holland, but they can't give a floor. continuation. Exactly. You, you're sure it's on Brian Holland? Yeah, it's well, definitely on Bron Holland. If it was, how could that be good in the foul? Right, it's a one-on-one -on -one situation right now. But the points are on the board, and McMahon can make it two. He does. LaSalle is out of timeouts. Franny Dunphy, though, takes one defensively. So both teams are out of timeouts. It's 72-70 Pennsylvania. Well, so that's a questionable call. Speedy's out at midcourt trying to get that official's attention. Well, there's no doubt Brian Holland fouled. He came right across the arms, but he came way before McMahon. They gave McMahon another step. He runs in and gets the offensive foul. So Penn got away with one there, or they should have gone the line for the one-on-one. -on -one. Two shots. And here it is. Right here. Let's see Brian Holland. 51. Right foul. there. There's the foul. But did he leave his feet when he got in foul? Nah, I think nah, it's got to be on the ground. Yeah. He didn't take another step. He kind of slid, then went up in the air. Levers did good position to take the charge, which, of course, the call had already been made. So they call it good at the foul. McMahon puts the bottom half in. And Pennsylvania looking for the upset. Speedy Morris looking to find a way to win it. <laughs> now the whole key is what does Franny Dunphy go in? He's been man-to-man -man most of all, probably the whole second half, and they've done a real good job. Does he try to mess 
LaSalle up and they go some trap or some zone. I don't think so because the shooters has got to be worried about her and Overton throwing in a three and beating them. So I think the man-to-man -man will be the defense. The other key is, I'm sure Fran Dumpy said, if a shot goes up, you block out. We need the basketball possession. Who cares about a fast break? No timeouts remaining for either club as well. So here it is. It comes down to this. Pennsylvania 72, LaSalle 70. In a scorcher at the Palestra. You know what's going to be in that man's hands, Doug Overton. they got to help Graf on Overton. Looking low post, Holland. No movement at all. Backdoor cut, Overton in the air. Tie game. Seven seconds. Chambers with five. He's going to try to go it alone. Paul Chambers throws it away. 70-footer, Holland. We're overtiming. We're overtiming at the Palestra. That is excellent execution by the LaSalle Explorers. I mean, that close to a game there, Doug Overton getting overplayed. The real nice bounce pass to Overton, and Overton kept control of himself, did not over-penetrate at the offensive foul. Got to give a lot of credit to LaSalle right there. Dougie now with 26, including the game's two most important points, which tied it at 72. Now each team will get an additional timeout as we go into overtime. Milko Levers, the bounce pass, the only pass that would make it. There he stops. He has the wide open Ron Holland, but he takes the shot and scores it. Now with the seven seconds, Chambers has to rush it down. If they had another timeout, they could have set something up, but they used it for the defensive purposes. But you got to give credit to LaSalle. Real good execution on that particular play. Real good. Play. And Dougie went straight up in the air. Did not lean in. Did not. A lot of times the guard will want to make the contact to get himself to the foul line at least. Went straight up in the air and put it in the basket. Now Paul Chambers tried to take it all the way. He just lost the handle of the basketball. You know, again, you can't fault the kid because it's a tie game. Seven seconds trying to get it up. Let's see. Chambers puts it on his left hand. He's losing control of the basketball right there. Maybe trying to make the pass on his offhand to left. There's the long. It goes off the guide wire if we can catch it here. Now, how many chances have we said, Brian Allen, throw the ball, see if you can hit the guide wire? <laughs> the Sal Athletic Director Bob Mullen just went down and visited on the bench with his, uh, his coach and his players, just catching some of the excitement. We're set for five more minutes of basketball. Maybe a couple of overtimes. We can take it right up to six or seven. Yeah, well, let's see now how Penn handles this. Penn had a chance of a a big upset here at the Palestra. Let's see if they can go five more minutes with those fouls close. Overton, Hurd, Neubauer, Levers, and Holland on the floor for the Sal. Graham, McMahon, Curran, Chambers, Marshall. For Penn and a whistle on the floor, Ken Graham. And this will be a two-shot foul now. It's foul number 10. What the Sal did there is they cleared the side for Doug Overton. Very quick with the basketball, tough assignment for Ken Graff. Tried to take the baseline, but just too slow to get there. Is it tough when you're the underdog to not let that balloon bust when you're forced into overtime? I think that's Penn's biggest problem right now, and Fran Dumpy's coaching ability has to come and get the guys motivated. I mean, it's a big game. They know they got in overtime, but they had the chance. It was right there, but LaSalle answered the bell. Over now is motor with 27, a career high 31 a couple of nights ago at Loyola, now 28. And Dougie looks like he's not going to let his, his club lose right now. He looks like he wants to take it over. It's We're good. in overtime. Back to a zone now. That's the way Speedy opened with that 3-2. Graff has room. Recognize that Ken Graff, the standstill shooter from distance. He was lackadaisical in that zone, has to get out there. Good patience by the Penn Quakers. Speedy calls the 55, the 5 5 offense. Levers low post, help from Curran. Rebound, Holland, big point board by Bronze. Well, we saw one thing the weakness of Quake, Penn Quakers rebounding the basketball, and LaSalle is taking it to them this afternoon. 26 to 9 unofficially on the offensive glass. LaSalle leads Pennsylvania. One point lead with 350 and counting in overtime. Grab with Overton. Near steal by Hurd. Jackie Hurd is cheating on Paul McMahon all the time. McMahon may have to make tougher cuts off his, his screen there because Hurd is definitely cheating on his man. Cheating for the steal. Grab with a screen. 
was heard. The defensive glass belongs to LaSalle. Side court break, Overton. Smith dribble. Hey, that's a big time move right there. 30 points for Dougie. A big time move. LaSalle by three. Marshall pops out. Oh, God. Jack hurt a, a nasty knee to the back of Paul McMahon. McMahon nearly crumpled. Again, overplaying for the steal. Grab to McMahon. Screen from Curran. Knocked away by Levers from behind. Turnover. Overton. Three on two. McMahon hustles to even it up. Dougie forces one. And he hadn't done that in quite some time. That's where Doug Overton, if they're not going to, they're going to be that tight on has to just blow by his defender there or stop and bring it back out. Two and a half remaining. Big trip for Penn. Chambers! It's Paul it's Chambers. Important. They have him listed at 5'10". That's generous, but his heart is bigger than his height. He's got 13. It's a one-point game. They said he couldn't play here in Penn basketball. Came here as a football recruit. He's given Fran Dumpy two big years. Hurt by the walk, gets it off, around and out. Defensive board, Vince Curran. Down one with the ball. We approach two minutes in overtime. And that's the offensive play. As Chambers taps the back of his head to alert them to the set. Is that it? Oh, I didn't God. think so. Now, uh, Ray, Ray Marshall got carried away with the emotions there. Not a real good shot. He looked over at Grant Duffy and almost kind of said, I'm sorry, as he backpedaled up the floor. Marshall and Chambers have played a long time with four fouls. Levers drops that baseline. No, foul Vince Curran. And that's not a good decision by Vince Curran. And the reason why is Milko Levers is turning say 13 feet from the basket and fading away. That's not his shot. Good defense, Vince Curran straight up, but he put the body on him and it's a good call by the official. 3,000 Curran. And Barry Pierce, the freshman, back in for Paul McMahon. Tough spot to put Barry Pierce back in really? right now. So Fran Dumpy must have a lot of believers. <laughs> Feels that he's strong in his ability. Neighbors not close. There goes Paul Chambers in there and saying, block out, block out. That's what's killed the Quakers all afternoon. And they've got five men for defensive rebounding position. They don't need them. It's a two-point game at 134. Both teams with a timeout remaining. with Overton. Marshall the pop out. There's the freshman. Grant keeps it alive. The Broderick president comes down with it. Ray Marshall knocks it out of bounds. Well, that's a gutsy shot by Barry Pierce. And McMahon will try to get back in. They're not going to let him in. Play is back underway. They won't let McMahon in for Pierce. Overton with one ten remaining. A two-point lead and the basketball. Triple stack near side. Overton. Works over Chambers. Curd with Pierce. Levers. Shot clock's at 20. Game clock at 50. Chambers has four fouls, but it doesn't matter now. Overton blows past two in the air. A new career high for Doug Overton. Gives LaSalle a four-point lead. He's got 32. And he's taken over overtime. Grab for three. Timeout, Fran Dunphy. We've still got one left. So Franny uses his final one, a big shot by Ken Grab. He's got 15 on five three-pointers. And Pennsylvania's hung in, down one. Penn has used the screen so well tonight, coming out for three-point opportunities. But Sal either has to get over the top of the screen or have to switch because what's happening is Ken Graff is coming out, who we know is a good standstill shooter from distance. But Sal is not doing a good job communicating as right now it's Fran O'Hale and the assistant and Fran Dumpy are trying to communicate and get an upset here at the full Estra.
Doug Overton takes over overtime as Noda gets a career high right here. Look at the speed on his left hand, goes right by Vince Curran, stops, and real nice soft touch. Believe me, that is a very difficult shot when you're going hard with your off hand and you can stop on a dime and float a six-footer right into the basket. Well, this has been a great one, huh? Oh, boy. Now if Barniak can just take over and give us a good one tonight, we've got a great triple header. Well, you know, those two guys, Barniak and Rams, are going to be in the mood after a, a good big five game. You know, that'll fire them up. Sixers and Celtics at 7.30 tonight on Prism. Sold out Spectrum will be rocking and rolling. And of course the, uh, the poorest foul shooter on the floor right now by percentage. Well, I thought it was Levers, but he's off the floor. I guess Speedy's one step ahead of me there. And they get it into Overton. Shot clock is turned off. The Sal by one. Chambers doesn't want to commit the fifth foul, but may have to, and he does, and his night's work is over. He wanted the help from McMahon on a double team, and it didn't come, so he committed the foul himself. Well, right there, if Paul Chambers could have made Overton give up the ball to say present or something, maybe then the foul, but I'll tell you, Paul Chambers gave everything he had tonight. Graduate of Piscola Academy in Philadelphia just played extremely good basketball. And he knew coming up the floor that he that somebody was going to probably have to foul Overton to kind of wait for a teammate to come on up and give the foul to Paul McMahon. McMahon had his back to the play guarding Jack Hurd. And Dougie winds up on the lawn. Obviously, he cannot ice it. Overton has yet to miss a free throw tonight. Five for five. Even if Overton does make the two foul shots, it's a three-point game. And with this three-point line that tight, with to go into it, another overtime. And is out of timeouts, as noted. LaSalle has one. I wonder if Speedy would use it to set the defense or take, uh, make Franny's club take it right off the floor. Here's Overton. His 33rd point. There's Purdy. All five Penn players are in defensive rebounding position. As they cannot afford to give up an offensive board here. And Sal doesn't want to foul if Overton misses. Overton's got 34. Speedy will not use his timeout on the defensive end. Down by three. Purdy gets a screen. Graff has Overton all over him. He's the best shooter from way out of target. Kept alive to Purdy. Has a cross-court pass block. Holland to Overton. He's fouled with six seconds remaining. Well, Purdy had the right idea, the freshman, but he tried a cross-court chest pass. If he threw the loop over the defense, he had Ken Graff for a real nice three-point opportunity. Here you go, Ken Graff way out in front of Fran Dumpy, trying to get the lead on the tie it on the three, but here we go, Purdy has it. He throws, tries to throw through the defense. There is Graff wide open for the three. If he loops it, Graff has a nice opportunity. Ray Marshall has fouled out. And now they uh, officially alert Franny that his uh, center has fouled out. And we will take uh, LaSalle, I guess, is going to take a charge timeout here with six seconds remaining. It is Mike Malofsky that will come in to replace Ray Marshall. And they're going to call it an official timeout. Charge it to LaSalle. Right here now, remember with the new ruling in the NCAA this year, on the 10th foul, they, you go to the line, you get two shots. Right now, the pressure's off Doug Overton. He's up three. He makes one of the two. It should be all over for the Penn Quakers this afternoon. But you got to give a lot of credit to Fran Dumpy, his coaching staff, and the players. I'll tell you what, they've come to play. Again, the movie Feds, which had been scheduled to get started at about 6 o'clock this evening, will not be seen tonight. If you really want to see that, it'll be on the air December the 16th. Look for it here on Prism. And Sports Scrapbook will follow our doubleheader action here and lead you into the 76ers Boston Celtics live from the Spectrum at 7.30. And Dick Vermeil is the guest with Jim Barniak. There's Ray Marshall and Paul Chambers. Chambers. I mean, oh. they gave it all they had, certainly. Fantastic effort. 
And Doug Overton simply has owned this extra five-minute session with a chance to put the final nail in with a couple of foul shots. You know, when Speedy called that timeout late in the game, probably six, seven minutes left in the game, they really came out with much more enthusiasm, too, because the Quakers were definitely out hustling them. But LaSalle did a nice job on the offensive glass, especially Jackie Hurd, and did a good job, and I think that was the reason for the W this afternoon. And unofficially, Doug Overton with 37. Kid. Oh, he misses. They can still get a tie. No. <laughs> Everybody forgot the new rule for a That's second. Right. Scared us. He missed it first, but of course it's not the one and one. But what Doug Overton did. Well, they got to put a second back on the clock. Granny wants that second back. It went down from six to five, and they're going to recycle it. That happens with rule changes from time to time. I've already given LaSalle the win, but if Doug Overton misses here, it's going to get a three-point chance. We have to run it all the way down. Now, in the 1990s, don't they just push something a little in digital? Right well, you know. I guess Pennsylvania just can't afford that new... You have board. the hollowed hardwoods, you know, That's you give right. and you take them. I like over, tradition. You know? Let's That's wait right. for it. We'll That's wait. Right. It's been a great game. And if Overton misses this, we have excitement. And they're restarting it back up at 20, so they're having a little problem with the clock. Hey, neither team had a timeout, so both teams are getting their final instructions as we count it down. And this is to Penn's advantage because they got over 10. Franny Duncan would like to have a timeout to ice them, so he's got getting what he wants. about it, yeah. Now Dougie's got to make it. If he does, it will be his 38th point. Well, look, excuse me, the last time when Doug shot the ball, he just shot and walked off the line real fast. Overton just has to stay in there and get keep his head still, and he'll make the shot. Brenny has done a miraculous job today because they will only win based on their execution, at least when they play a team like LaSalle. All the magazines I saw early in the season had Penn anywhere from 5th, 7th. One had them, and they had Hossam Duncan in there. Now, you take Duncan off the team. I'll tell you, Franny Dumphy has done a real nice job, and if he can play like this in the Ivy League, he'll be more at the top than the bottom. Disciplined aggression is what Franny's tried to coach into his club. They must play with discipline, but they can't be passive about it. Meantime, Speedy Morris knows he'll get Randy Woods back either on the Japan trip or sometime shortly thereafter, just trying to survive at this point and getting meaningful minutes for some young people that may serve him well down the line. Speedy Mars has elected to take all his players off the line. He must have seen some other coaches do this, so he said, oh, what the oh, heck, I'll do it myself. I mean, it's not an original idea? Nah, he, he never had an original idea. Over it must take this one. And he does. It's a four-point game, no fouls. Dougie just hangs to the foul line and says, why bother? Graff for three or Purdy for three. And a real solid Big Five basketball game is history. The South taken to overtime by the Quakers of Pennsylvania. Win it by a final score of 84 to 80. Big key hoops down the throat. Dougie had 38 points tonight. He had 33 against Loyola for his career high at 38. And again, Speedy's going to get Randy Woods back in a, in a little while and, and is building some debt, some, some positives for both teams today. Well, I'm sure Doug Overton doesn't miss S Simmons at all. But I'll tell you, <laughs> Penn played real well, and the LaSalle Explorers answered it. Both teams played very well this afternoon. And you're back here at the Palestra Monday night for Villanova, Pennsylvania. So we'll have more Big Five basketball coming up. Of course, later on at 7.30 this evening, we will have Philadelphia 76ers Boston Celtics basketball live with Jack Ramsey and Jim Barniak from the Spectrum. Stay tuned for that. For producer John Slobotkin, director J.R. Aguila, my partner Ed Stefanski, I'm Larry Rosen. Thanks for joining us for Big Five Basketball on Prism, and have a good night, everybody.